Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to video number 26 in our series of WordPress website secrets. Uh, you're looking at uh, the site that we've created from scratch here, WordPresswebsitesecrets.com. And if you've just joined us here on video number 26, uh, feel free to check out the description below uh, for links to the previous 25 videos that cover all the imaginable beginner topics. And now we're going to start to get into some really good stuff. So today we're going to get into the code and start changing some of the code. And for example, on this website, I've been waiting to get to this video because I cannot stand how much room this header takes. It's just way too much real estate. It could be much, much more narrow. Another thing I don't like is I don't like how wide this is. All this stuff could get moved up. Uh, the more information that uh, people can see when they land on your page, in my opinion, the better. Uh, without it being too cluttered. Um, so we're going to need to get into the theme code to fix this and fix this. Uh, we can also change the font here if we want to change the font here. Um, there's just so many things that we can do. I am going to teach you a WordPress secret above all other secrets that is going to turn you into a code changing ninja. So let's get into it. You're going to need a tool for this and if you just go and do a Google search do a Google search for Notepad++ and it's the first thing that pops up. Go straight to the download page and we're going to download it. And as you can see, it's downloading down here. I'm using uh, Chrome and I highly recommend you use Chrome. As a matter of fact, this video is going to be based on Chrome. So uh, go ahead and fire up your Chrome browser. All right, so it's an executable. It's ready to go. I'm going to click on it and all you have to do is just say yes and follow the prompts. I agree. Next. Next. So here we go. We're going to run Notepad. Okay, so the majority of the changes that we're going to be making uh, to our WordPress site are actually going to be uh, in CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. So go to Language and come down to C and click on CSS. Okay, so now that we've changed the language to CSS, this is what we're going to do. Go ahead and minimize that and go into the dashboard. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Appearance and we're going to go to Editor. And you're going to see it should default to the style CSS. If it doesn't, come over here to Styles and click on Style CSS. Okay. So here's something that's important. If you're just joining in on this video, one of the things that we talked about in earlier videos is the importance of selecting a theme that has a parent theme and a child theme. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we go to Appearance Themes, you can see that I'm using the Genesis Framework. This is the parent theme, and then the child theme that I'm using is Active Smart Passive Pro. It is extremely important that you use a parent child theme structure if you want to make changes to your theme, because if you do not, if you just use a theme that doesn't have this structure and you make changes to your theme, the next time that the developer has an update to the theme, all of your changes will be wiped out. In our case here, all the changes that a developer might make uh, to their theme or the company that designed the theme, any changes that they may have made will be changed here and all of our changes in the child theme will remain. So that's the importance of a parent-child theme. And if you look in the description below, you'll see a uh, link to a video for um, parent-child themes. So let's get on with it. Let's go into the editor. And when you get to the editor, you'll see Style CSS. If you're not looking at Style CSS, go ahead and click on it over here. And then the other thing that you're going to want to double check is make sure it should default to the child theme. But as you can see, when I select the down arrow here, I get an opportunity to go between the parent theme and the child theme. And obviously, I want the child theme. So what I'm going to do is with my Style CSS, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click anywhere within this area. And I'm going to do a control a to select it all. Then I'm going to do a control C and then I'm going to go over in a notepad and on line one I'm going to control V to paste it and there we go. And now all of our code is here. 
Okay, so go ahead and minimize that at this point. And now, I'll go back to visit site. So our goal at this point is minimize the amount of height that we have here and minimize the amount of height that we have here just, to, just as our examples. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go, now remember we're using Google Chrome. Google Chrome is the best browser to do this. So come up to the three little dots here, customize and control Google Chrome, click on it, come down to more tools and then go into developer tools and click on it. And then don't get nervous. I know it's code. It's, it looks scary. Don't be scared. It's no big deal. This is going to make it so, so easy for us to change the code. So check this out. Here is the secret of all secrets. Come up to this little thing right here, this little icon, select an element, and click on it. Now watch how freaking easy this is. When we mouse over any element, the code changes over on the right-hand side to show us what we're looking at. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're interested in changing this big area right here. Okay, notice you got to be careful because you start from the inside. That's this element right here. That's the div title area. And then if I go like this, now I'm looking at the div dot wrap. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now that I've got it selected, I'm going to click on it. Okay, so you see how it highlights when I go like that? Now I can click on it. Now, as I mouse over things over here, it's also showing me what, what it's changing by highlighting it. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to find the place where it highlights the same exact area that I wanted to change it earlier. And if I go over site header, look at that. It highlights the exact same area. So when I mouse over site header, you see it changes the exact area that we want it to change. And you see this padding right here. It says 60 pixels. So let's get in here. And instead of it being 60 pixels, let's change it to 25. Did you see how that happened? Let me show you again. There's two. There's nothing. Here's 60. And I, I've settled on 25. So now, when I click on it, it's now 25. Now here's the cool thing. This does not change your code at all. Okay? You can't just log into anybody's website and change their code through Google Chrome. We're going to have to actually make this change on our own server. But this really gives you an opportunity to see what it looks like. Just hit Control and F5 and it'll refresh the page and it'll take it back to 60. Okay, So let me go back to padding, change it back to 25, and there it is. So where in the world is that change? Okay, so if you look here, you see style.css, and it looks like it's on line 1260. So let's click here and come down to line 1260. 1260, and there it is. It is, it's line 1260. So we like our change. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over our Notepad++. Okay, so now we're coming back to our notepad, but before we make any changes in notepad, let's do file and let's do save as and make sure you save it someplace where you know where you're saving it. I'm just going to pop it on the desktop and let's call this original and hit save. That way we have a backup. Now, let's go to line 1262 and change this to 25. Now, make sure you go file and make sure you do a save as, and you can call this one style, and save it. Now we've got our original, just in case we screw something up, we can always revert back to it, but now we've got our padding of 25. So let's make this minimized. Okay, so now it's time to change this area right here. So let's go ahead and click on our little icon up here to select an element, and you're going to get used to these divisions or divs. Uh, that div right there is the header. If you look at the pop-up over here, this is the nav primary, and then you get into some of the more elements of the page and so on. But knowing that this is your navigation bar, your primary navigation bar is going to help you um, because it's not always super cut and dry. I will admit to the fact that although this is easier than writing code from scratch, it's not always cut and dry. So now I want to change the height of this. So I'm going to click on it. I'm getting a hint up there in orange that says nav primary. 
Um, but I've also got some weird stuff uh, menu before, and I can't make it change, so I'm not exactly 100% sure. So let me click on it, and it says before. So I'm going to come down here, and it says nav primary before. And I don't see anything here like I did on the other one that had anything to do with padding. So like I did before, I'm going to go and click on the style sheet and I get the style sheet and it's putting the cursor right here at this nav primary before but this is going to come with practice hopefully I can I can shortcut this for you but if you pan up you see all this stuff has to do with the site navigation so I came all the way back up to the start of site navigation and now I'm going to start looking for my nav menu padding and let's see it is not here but oh here we go hand down. So here is Genesis Nav Menu A padding 32. So let me just make it, that changed it right there. If I make it 92, you can see what it does. Going back to 32, I think 32 is too tall. I'm going to make it 22. I like 22 much better. So what line of code am I at? I'm at 1388. So let me go back to my notepad. So we changed on 1388, we changed the padding from 32. We changed it to 2 to 20. Ah, how about 22? And I'll do a file save. So now we can kind of see what it's going to look like. Just as another example, let me click on the element finder and instead of selecting the whole area, that's the whole header site header, what if we were to drill all the way down. Notice that there's a difference between here and here. So let's click on this. And if we come over here, just like we did before, and we click on the style sheet, look at this. And we kind of scroll up a little bit. We see site title is called Roboto. And we can change this if we want to. Watch how easy this is. I'm going to pick, a, I'm going to pick an obvious example. Computer. Look how it changed that. And it only changed the site title. It didn't change it throughout. You got to be careful. You don't, you've got to make sure that you don't change things throughout. So that was just an example. I'm not going to keep that example. And if I want to dismiss all of the changes that I've made, all I do is I can hit F5 refreshes the page and control F5 drops the cache and, and refreshes the page. So if you ever hit F5 and you don't see your changes, uh, try control F5. And there we go. And now we're back to the beginning. What we're going to do is we can get rid of all of this code stuff by clicking the little box and we're going to go to dashboard and now we're going to make the changes for real and we're going to go to appearance and we're going to go to editor. Now, super, super important. If you haven't made a copy of this by highlighting it all, dumping it in the notepad and saving it, do it now. And that is a control A, control C, go to notepad. Do a file new and dump it in there. Okay, before you make any changes, always, always, always have a backup of your original. We have a backup of the original, so now I can hit delete, and now my site will be completely broken. So what I need to do is I need to go back to Notepad, and I'm going to go to the one that I created, and I'm going to click somewhere in it. I'm going to do Control A and Control C. I'm going to come back in here, pop my cursor in there, and I'm going to do a control V, pop everything in, and I'm going to update the file. And once I've clicked update file, I can go back to the site and visit the site. And you can see the changes have been made. Now, if the changes, if you don't see that the changes have been made, just hit F5 to refresh the page. If that doesn't work, hit control F5 to refresh the page. And as you can tell, the changes are made. So I think you get the idea. Uh, I'm going to be making some more changes to the site. So I'll go ahead and do that off camera. And there it is. So I think that's enough examples. This will not be easy for you when you first start out. But you're going to start to really see some patterns. It's really going to help you to understand the CSS that goes into your site. And you're going to start to see patterns. You can you know, maybe even spend an hour mousing over certain elements of your site and seeing what pops up over on the right hand side so that you can start to get familiar with uh, all the different divisions or divs of your site. But I have found the Chrome developer tools uh, indispensable in 
very, very quickly identifying what code belongs to which part of the website and being able to go in and make quick, quick changes. All right. This is getting exciting. We're starting to get into some really intermediate stuff here, and uh, I got tons more for you. So uh, I'm Steve with WordPress website secrets.com. Please like, subscribe, comment, watch all my other videos. I appreciate the views. Check the description for links to all the other videos, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.